Hey everybody, how you doing? I'm Pabs, a racing VTuber and an artist. Today we'll be working a little bit more on the comic page that we started last week. As you can see, I have graciously given Hawk some feed. I realized that um, even though the sketch didn't have feed originally in the in this panel, I reckon that having her lower half be more visible will help like give more shape rather than just like making it a formless mass of jet stream like I have here. There will still be plenty of jet stream, don't get me wrong. Just in a more controlled environment. Speaking of which, I have to get this background sorted out. So, uh, huh. How are we doing this? Now, normally what I, w what I would do is I would add a 3D layer somewhere here. So I think that's what we're going to do this time. Cube. All right, so here's the plan. Here's the skinny. We're going to shrink this cube down to nothing. Going to angle it in such a way that it matches. We can make it so that it matches the, the uh, what do you call, uh, shipping containers here. And we can actually move the camera a little bit so we can have the cube be over, for example, here, and then the camera isn't so drastically out of sync or maybe we can i don't know sometimes when you get to, to angles that are too extreme the camera starts doing some unprecedented things so i'd rather not take too much of a risk if i recall correctly i'm trying i switched to which barn they blast out of originally too didn't i page two i remember editing page two in a panic because of that. Okay, it's the one on the right. So in reality, this would actually all be kind of shifted to the left a little bit. Which, you know, isn't the end of the world. We can actually probably just grab this bottom half. We don't even need to fuck around with the top half. Yeah, that shouldn't be too difficult. Why can't I move it? Is this not the right layer? Oh, dang, it isn't. All right, let me duplicate the actual layer and then we can get to work. You might, some of you might notice that I'm still wearing my Majima outfit. That's because I think I look very smart in this, you know, little tuxedo and bow tie combo. I don't know, sometimes it's just nice to look nice, you know? Like, if you haven't worn a suit in a long time, or you haven't worn something fancy in a long time, it, sometimes it just feels nice to get it out of the, get, get it out of the mothballs, so to speak. You know? I always get weirdly excited when I get to wear a suit. Although now less so now that I do office stuff, and my day wear is essentially... Um, you know, a a dress shirt and sl and slacks. But you know, there's still ways you can get a little fancy with it, a little silly with it. Okay, so here's what we'll do. Huh. Okay, that's not quite the angle that I was expecting. I think there was like a thing. Oh, so that's what the two point perspective can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah hang on. Let me go to the angle this is at. Panorama. You know what? Let us eschew the cube-based shortcut, because now I'm feeling a little saucy. Yesterday, I, I played around a little bit with perspective rulers. Now I'm feeling a little bit more brave with them. Let's see. Layer. Ruler. Create perspective ruler. Two-point perspective. Do not use fisheye perspective. No need to create a new layer. Here we go. All right, so if, if my understanding of this from yesterday is correct, what I need to do is that I need to put the van this vanishing point over in this direction and put this one in this direction. So that way... Ooh. 
Sorry, I'm just very easily amused by this sort of thing. Okay, maybe if I put this over here. I got the feeling that... Oh, wait, no, hang on. Yeah, we can do this, too. Huh? huh. Hmm. Okay, if we do it like this, then we break it like that. Let's try to make sure that they're they're kind of like on the same level, if that makes sense. Okay. I think this will work. Let's move that back to where it was just now. Okay, right around here. Man, I hope I'm doing this right. <laughs> This doesn't seem right, but let's see if it works. <laughs> oh. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Not bad, not bad. Hmm. This line isn't quite up to snuff, though. We might need to... How would we do that? Okay, I see. I need to replace it so that it's over here. Okay. Okay, now, wait, no. That's still not working as intended. You know what? Perhaps I was too too hasty to dismiss the cube. <laughs> Perhaps in my hubris, I, I bit the cube that feeds me, so to speak. So it's important to try and experiment with the different rulers and features of this thing every once in a while. Yeah, no. I, I thought I was hot shit and could disregard the cube. Shows how much I know. <laughs> I'm nothing without this cube. <laughs> Me when my name is Rubric. <laughs> and then it also hi Adept. You know, I have I, I definitely my 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 current predicament could for sure be used in some manner of Greek myth or perhaps allegory. Let's see. Okay, we can we can get rid of that cube. We just need its ghost. We we need the uh, soulless husk of a 3D environment which it left behind. Okay, not bad. How about this? The memories of the cube. I feel like that would be the name of, like, an unreleased Daft Punk track. Memories of Cube. Col that, that'd that be, like, a one of those, like, a collaborative compilation CDs, but it's all, like, classic GameCube video game tracks. Yeah, you, you hear the um, main theme of Pokemon Coliseum remix to B in Ska. Actually, that would kind of whip ass. I kind of want to hear that now. <laughs> Dude, I, I should play Pokemon Coliseum at some point on stream. I love that game as a kid. I couldn't understand a word of it, but I, I really liked how it looked. I should also try to play the sequel to it. Okay, let's add this one here, and then we can 
probably probably around here I'd say I would divide them Ryan WB hey hey Ryan how you doing welcome to the stream we are currently working on the background here I think hang on let me let me double check page two Okay, yeah, they have a, there's like this structure out in front here, that which I don't think I had in the first draft. <laughs> but that's fine. We can just add a little, we can have a, we can have like a crumb of the structure. Not the whole structure, just like a, like a little, like a little, um, like a little something of it. We can we can have like the the small the miniaturized version of the structure that we have that like is hanging out in New Vegas for whatever reason. In Las Vegas, not New Vegas. That game has permanently ruined my ability to relate to the state of Nevada. Checking in on the process. Thank you. Yeah, no, I I think it's going okay. I I'm trying to get these pages out relatively quick, but that's not always in the cards. Backgrounds are hell. Uh, yeah. Recently, I've been trying to have some more fun with them, right? I make I make these silly thumbnails for the Yakuza tr streams, and I think I've been learning a little bit more about the essence of making backgrounds, but it's still not... There's, like, things, right, that you sign up for as an artist. Right, like so, like you are occasionally when you when you start doing art, right? You you generally start doing it because you want to do something, right? Whether that is make a character, draw a person, draw an animal, those sorts of things. And I think like when you stop, or when you have to step outside of that comfort zone, out of that original objective, it becomes a little bit difficult because it's not it doesn't have like that kind of original joy spark if you will, of the reason you started. Like, I love drawing characters. I w I'm not in this shit for the backgrounds. <laughs> yeah, no, it is such a tall curve. I do know one Twitter artist that adores doing backgrounds, and they are just the strongest person that I know. <laughs> like, I'm glad, you, I'm glad that person chose love and peace. I... <laughs> I cannot say the say the same for myself. Also, I probably don't need to draw much of the second tent here. Probably just a little bit of the curve. Actually, probably just like the semicircle curve in the back here. Around here, I think. Mm, a little bit to the left. Really does depend on the environments, too, because I don't even want to do much with cities. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, no. Like the more urban a place gets, it's also harder. Like I remember, like I like speaking of the yakuza backgrounds, I did one of like the inside of a bathroom for the second thumbnail, and I was like surprised at how much even like a simple room had going on in it. Because like at first I was like, oh okay, it's kind of simple. It's got like just tiles. It's got like a couple of fluorescent lights in there. I can I can for sure knock this out in like an afternoon. But then I started noticing that like the tiles had patterns. The bathroom stalls were made with, like with this uh, wood stained texture. There were there there was like a weird edge to the wall too. It was super interesting. The insides of places are generally easier to do for me as well. I will say, like I remember, like I was doing a an outside scene not too long ago in this comic, and that took me forever and ever and ever to finish. But I, I did one that was like inside a simple room in the other page. And I was like, oh my God, I can do this in one sitting. I lined it in like one go. Yeah. No, I, I, everybody says that a, a background is its own character. 
I don't know. Maybe, maybe you could do something with that. Like, maybe, maybe your city has limbs. I'm pretty sure that's, that's the plot of Xenoblade. Let's see. Increase the size of this. Yeah, like, how literal can you get with, like, the background as its own character? I think... I think the most literal you can get with it is something like uh, the House of Leaves, right? Like the house itself is like an entity character in that one. That is the case sometimes with Xenoblade. Yes! Wait a minute, I can just copy and paste this first house. What the hell am I doing? <laughs> All right, let's just grab you. Mostly the first one, but also sort of the second one too. I don't know mu too much about Xenoblade Two. Like I remember, I remember seeing the box case for Xenoblade Chronicles One one time when I visited my brother. Like he had it on his Wii, but I never, I never played the game myself. All I know about Two is like the is like two other characters got into Smash. That's a beauty of isometric layouts for sure. This, isom this isometry shit kicks ass. I can see why Fallout 1 did it like this. Hmm, that's weird. Also, how many ribs did I give the thing here? Okay, th okay three layers or two ribs, that's fine. I'm using a brush that's a little too thick. Let me put let me bump that down to like seven. Okay. Then There we go. Nice little starburst pattern. Or shape. I guess it's not really a pattern. It always made me a little bit mad that starburst is more is mostly recognized as the name of like a candy because that's such a badass word, right? Like a star is so powerful that it's like bursting like vinata or something. But no, it's just like these like fruit flavored chiclets. I mean, they're pretty good candy. I'm not gonna lie. Like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not about to be a hater about Starburst. They are fairly decent candy. <laughs> I've had worse for sure. Hmm. I don't know what I feel like everybody has like one mid tier candy like everybody everybody has like one candy that they consider mid but also that somebody else considers like the peak of the peak that's a that's a beauty of like having a bunch of candy with your friends as a kid right like you've like I think we've all had an experience or a similar situation where we were where you had like a bunch of snacks or something with your friends and you were all kind of like divvying them up and being like all right I'll I have this much I will trade you two of these for one of those and they're like all right deal or they're like no deal you you're trying to fleece me <laughs> before you know it the the entire living room's been turned into some kind of makeshift bazaar Sharing Halloween candy with friends and giving them all the stuff you don't like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you need a diverse friend group palette to be most effective with this. For example, for me, I never really liked to Tootsie Rolls. They weren't my thing. But I did like candy corn, and some people didn't like that very much. So, so, an, so an accordance was struck. A trade deal was closed. Let 
I mean, what would be an embargo in this situation? Would it would it be like just not being allowed to go out trick or treating? Yeah. Same thing with like those um chalky Valentine candies. I actually really like those. There might be a lot of like Altoids or something. Having a box of mints near me is a very dangerous thing because I will just absent uh, absent-mindedly pop one into my mouth as I'm working or doing whatever. And like th 2 hours later I'll be like, "Oh man, why do I have a headache?" And it's because I've just been eating little tablets made of sugar for the past entire day. <laughs> yeah. I would fuck up a tiny box of Tic Tacs. Don't do not get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay what's the pattern what, what was the pattern on the structure back here okay so we got top middle bottom bottom okay First, before that, though, let's make the grassy edge we have here. I feel like if I'm going to do that, I need to make the bottom half of this longer. Yeah, the thing, I, I'm very much like a person who, when they snack, they kind of go on autopilot mode. Like, like I, I will either fully eat, focus on the snack or I will like have the snack by my side and tap out. Like I, for that very same reason, my, I used to love getting sunflower seeds. Dudes, if you've ever, if you have like decent teeth, like, assuming it's not going to fuck up your teeth, just gnawing on some sunflowers for, like, a solid afternoon is just so good. Like, they have such a nice sm smoky flavor to them. They are great for fiber, honestly. Kind of gross having to put them away, though. I will admit. <laughs> okay, let's see. Around here, we would have had... Wait. No. No, I messed it up again. <laughs> Hold on. This is the end of the world. Like we can we can bounce back from this. There we go. We just got to patch up the holes that we left behind. <laughs> It pisses me off so much whenever I'm like, okay, I need I need to make this adjustment so that it'll look normal. And then I need to remember to account for that adjustment in my actual art. And then I don't do that. <laughs> There's this Tumblr post that got stuck in my head. I actually don't remember if it was like a Tumblr post that was cross posted from that was like a Twitter screenshot or like an actual, uh, shall we say, like domestically produced Tumblr post. I remember there was this one where like this guy, this guy was like, I ate a, I ate a sour grape and I was at a loss for words and my day was ruined. But then I had like a very nice little bagel and my joy in humanity was instantly restored. Just another day for me, the sensitive snacker. <laughs> sensitive snacker, particularly like the alliteration thereof. I think about that a lot. God, yeah, bagels have some, they put, they put something in bagels. P potentially love. <laughs> that makes them so banging. <laughs> I remember I had very recently a rosemary bagel for the first time from a cafe near my workplace. I, 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 I live in a place that's like very close to a nice little cafe that is my favorite bagel. 
<sighs> oh. My usual order is like cinnamon, cinnamon raisin with cream cheese. If we're merely talking like bagel type and topping, cinnamon with cinnamon, cinnamon raisin with cream cheese. I like them sweet. That rosemary bagel, though. Very nice change of pace, I will say. Because it's so good to have something, even if you don't necessarily plan for it. It could be a little bit more harrowing if you don't plan for it. But if you don't have, if you have something that you weren't planning on having every once in a while, it's just very nice. Like, I remember I actually learned about the... I actually started going to that cafe a little bit more often, the one that I, where I got the rosemary bagel. Because a friend of mine was like, oh, yeah, dude, I got my lunch from this place. They have these cookies that are the size of your head, and they make these breakfast sandwiches with, like, sriracha mayo. And instantly, my I was, like, sitting up, ears perked up. Like, I was like, oh, yeah? You don't say, bud. <laughs> so naturally, I go and try to get some lunch over there. I get there, no more breakfast sandwiches. They have run out of that in those things. They are they are not but a distant memory in the rearview mirror. But they still had some vegetable wraps. And you know, I'm not very picky about my vegetables anymore. I used to be a very picky kid. I'm not that picky about them anymore. And I had to get something like these. I was like, all right, bring on the vegetable wrap. That thing had like hummus. And avocado and 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 obviously lettuce and some tomatoes too. But like the hummus in there was kind of a game changer. I'm not gonna lie. Like it had me thinking some crazy shit. Like this is how I started eating healthy. <laughs> okay, and then we can just kind of. I think it just slopes. A little bit. Yeah, we have like this little sandcastle <laughs> arrangement over here. The archaeological dig site, which has its own tiny little baby sized dig site. You know, for bring your kid to work day. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like. I don't know if archaeology is an appropriate field to have bring your kid to work day in. Because on the one hand, what kid wouldn't love to go searching for like dinosaurs or something? But on the other hand, that is a that is a great responsibility you are pushing onto a child. Like obviously most children don't like do anything at bring your kid to work day. Is that still a thing even? I feel like bring your kid to work day definitely must have I feel like that was definitely like a nineties thing that everybody assumed would just be around forever. Like, modern cartoons don't have bring your kid to work day plots. I remember when I was, like, a kid, all kinds of cartoons had, like, oh, yeah, it's bring your kid to work day. Let's see what kind of goofy shenanigans Dexter does at his dad's job or something like that. Nowadays, it's not really like that. I mean, there's there there might be, like, something where, like, a character gets, like, insight into their parents' day job, but that's very rarely, like, bring your kid to work. I I don't know. Like I guess the closest to it would be like the 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 most recent example that I can think of is like Steven Universe. How, how that kid sometimes helped out at his dad's like car wash or something. But even then, that's not exactly bring your kid to work day. That's just like making your kid work. <laughs> that's just like an ordinary family run business. <laughs> If I wanted to see that for kid, bring your kid to work, I could just go to the bodega down the street. <laughs> Which one of these had the flag? Okay, the flag was just a little bit over here. Now TV shows have kid, give your kid iPad day. I be I bet in this modern world, yeah, they don't have to bring your kid to work or, or kid day anymore because of because of the woke. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, no, everybody's a communist now, so they so bring your kid to work day was abolished. <laughs> God, could you imagine? That, I know that that's like, like like a dangerous joke card to play, being that I'm like a straight cisgendered male. <laughs> but like, I do think it's really funny whenever somebody's like, "You can't do that anymore because of the woke." <laughs> Take your kid to woke day. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh my god, it's... Sometimes you just see a phrase that's so powerful, you can already... like In your mind's eye, you can already see the shitty political cartoon that can spring from that phrase. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> that was a banger. Alright. Oh, I haven't heard that, laughed that hard in a while. Okay, put this over here. Does this look strange? Eh, no stranger than anything else on this page. Although I could make this a little bit lower. I'm going to put this line like right here so it doesn't interrupt with the top one. I think there's like some kind of tire track thing I did over here. Yeah, I can I can just replicate that with the brushes and everything. I don't need to worry about that too much. Now what I probably should be worrying about, I don't need to worry about these trees very much either, come to think of it. I think the main thing left for this page is... Hmm. I might be able to get away by adding some kind of like white streak or some kind of speed effect on this side as well. All right, I think that the only thing left is the jet stream coming from the tent. Okay. Whoop, other way around. I'm going to drink myself a glass of water real quick. Hang on. Perhaps that was hyperbole. I'm not drinking an entire glass of water. I'm taking like a quick sip from my trusty water bottle. I wonder what's the wrongest anybody's ever pronounced bottle. Like, immediately my mind goes to the French pronunciation, which is probably like botle. I don't know. I feel like we can do better than that. Yeah, I take a sip from my trusty Vault 13 <laughs> pla plastic water bottle that I lost the cap to years and years ago. <laughs> Do I still have the cap for this thing, actually? I don't think I do. I think that might... <laughs> I said that as a bit, but I don't think I actually have the cap for this thing anymore. <laughs> but that's fine. I don't really put a cap on it. I'm very fortunate that I have, like, one of those, like... I ha I've had two desks while I've been living here, right? In my, in my current living space. I've had my first desk, which was this one I got off of Amazon. And... That was like years and years ago. And it came with this tiny little mini desk for the monitor, right? And now in case you didn't have like a monitor arm or a tall enough monitor stand, it's good for your posture, right? It's, it, it forces you to sit a little straighter to, to look at your monitor. And I still use that. I, th I still have the old table. I use it as a, well, normal table. I guess originally it was a desk. But I still keep the uh, little mini table that it has for the sake of maintaining my posture 
Uh, can I like lift this up a little bit? I wonder. Hmm. I need to finish the explosion on this side. Or I guess the tear hole. The rupture? That sounds that sounds like the right word. Okay. This part here can be trees, this part over here is going to be grass. And we can add a little bit of like motion effects. All right, we're good. I think we can move on from this panel. I need to make the figures in this one smaller. That's not going to be nearly enough room for a raft to put text into. Yeah, I think going forward, a good idea would, if, if I, something I should pitch to Raph is the idea that, that when he's working with an artist, he should probably, after the sketches are done or during the sketch process, he can, he should like try to put the speech bubbles in before the art is starting, because that way I, th I feel like it'll save everybody a little bit of time and a headache. And then maybe we can put this one a little bit lower as well. Where would this even be? Over here? Yeah, okay. Wait a minute. Oh, huh? Wait. Yeah, no, I think I think it's a good idea to do them as early as you can because I feel like that just like saves you a lot of trouble when figuring out, oh, I need to draw this. I've always said I something that I've noticed about my own art development is that I've I've it's very much been a case of like movement over foundation. <laughs> Like I'll, I will first, I will first like figure out a new trick, try to make that look good, and then I will be like, okay, how many shortcuts can I take before this starts to look like garbage? <laughs> and to my credit, it's worked pretty well so far. <laughs> what would be the equivalent of like mashing buttons on? Control-Z. I was going to say, what would be the equivalent of mashing buttons for art, but it's just t hitting Control-Z a, a bunch until you get the line right. I, re I remember that I gained that habit after I saw some one of those like ask blogs. Do you guys remember ask blogs? Remember how that, that used to be a thing, like ask such and such character? I remember I followed one of those for a long time. And they said that they got their lines to look so smooth because they basically used to just do it like this, right? They would just like do it over and over and over until like they got the line that they wanted. And while that's definitely a approach, an approach, damn near forgot my own grammar. That's that, that's definitely like an approach you can take. I feel like in the long run, that just hurts you because you should be focusing on making the first line as clean as possible whenever you can. Okay. So a little bit of change of plans. Before we had the grenades shaped like canisters. Now they're more like shaped like frisbees. 
So I'm excited to see what I will think up <laughs> to <laughs> to work around that. <laughs> Yeah, I can just like move the 3D thing here. Oh lordy. Oh, this one's sensitive. Whew. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> that's fine though. We we got this. Okay. Just move this one here. Is there a way to hang on? Can I like just select all of these at once? I I can. I definitely can. I know I can do that. Can I just like rotate these little jerks? Yes. Okay, we're in business. All right, now we gotta now we gotta nerf the hell out of the opacity for these things. Okay, the good news is that I think I only need to draw maybe two and a half of these, which is nice. I don't I I enjoy not having to draw too many. What's this part and why? What is this part and why is it so detailed? I can tell I was trying to do something there. I think that's supposed to be like a grenade pin. Okay, bam, bam. Okay, let's take this one slowly. No, that's also not working. All right, fuck it. We ball. Oh, yeah. Ryan, if you're still around, uh, do you use vector layers or do you do do it like raster only for your for your own comic art? I've just kind of adapted to to vector layers as a way of life. I'm always curious about to see to see like if other people know about them or they like using them or if they don't like using them. Rather, oh yeah, no. I think it was actually like um that cat, that cat girl Nia. She she's the one who put up like a, a very basic tutorial on how vector layers work, and, I'm, and my interest was like immediately peaked. I think that was back in 2019. It was definitely after I got Clip Studio Paint. Like I definitely bought Clip Studio Paint and then learned about vector layers. So it must have been like after 2018 for sure. But yeah, no, they are so useful. Especially if you like using like a cell shaded style like this, where it's just line art, a color then then shading. Very handy. Okay, flatten these guys out. Now, how do I... The hell do I do with this one? <laughs> Yeah, no, if if you're just doing line work, there's no reason. Well, I, I somebody must have a reason, but I don't I can't think of any off the top of my head. I'm I'm remembering this one XKCD strip that's just like no matter how, how convenient you believe that the update is, it's going to mess up somebody's workflow. And the example that they give is this guy who updated his software to no longer overheat your computer and a user was complaining because they had apparently set up their computer to do like a specific command when it overheated instead of being able to just tap the space bar to do the exact same thing <laughs> and they are and the developers like that's terrifying <laughs> I remember I used to watch this one video game, like this one gaming channel on YouTube. I think it was called like Let's Game It Out or something that did basically that exact same 
not exact same, but it, it definitely went around trying to like deliberately break whatever games the host was playing. And that made it very fascinating. I don't have the kind of glit the bug hunter Bushido lifestyle in me. <laughs> Right, I, I I see people trying to like break games to learn about speedrun skips, and I'm immediately like, huh, all right, <laughs> I will not be able to do that. <laughs> I don't know. Something about breaking games makes me very nervous. I remember when I was a child, uh, when I was a, like a very young kid, right? I was messing around with like like with one of those uh, Nintendo sixty four emulators. And I realized that one of the ones that I that one of the things that the emulator could do is that it could emulate certain glitches and cheat codes for you, right? So like if there was like a Game Shark thing or like a Game Genie thing that you could do on the cartridge and the original hardware, like they could let you do that. And I tried it for a couple of games, and for some reason it just kept scaring me witless whenever it actually worked. I don't know why. It, it, it just it, it freaked little goober six-year-old Babs out. Oh, goodness. Yeah. I, I've mentioned that recently I've been playing, I've been watching a lot of AG, AGDQ videos in the background while I work off stream. And one of the ones that I, one of the runs that I watched very recently was actually a Superstar Saga run. And the cool thing about the Superstar Saga run is that for the first hour or so of gameplay, I want to say, 45 minutes or so of gameplay, it's pretty much a normal game. It's it's just the same the normal gameplay, but with minimal glitches and just sometimes it's a li you do a little bit of sh movement to get get through it faster. But then you get to like a chateau area like when you start being able to like morph mario around with your hammer it starts to get you start to be able to like do some glitch shit and it immediately just like breaks the game in a really like you know pixel vomit right like i, I think that's the term that they used it basically just like puts a bunch of different colors and broken sprites on the screen at a time. And I was like, oh, okay, so this still makes me feel uneasy. That's interesting. It's quite interesting. It is actually quite interesting because if I see like a care like art of a I know that there's people who are very uncomfortable seeing art of like a character being glitched out or something, right? I know that that's like one of those um, things that exists, but when I see like art of a character being glitched out, I'm like, oh, that looks sick as hell. Like I am excited for it. I don't know though. Like there's something, there's something about the particular medium of video games that makes it feel a little bit weird to me. Oh yeah, no, the, the Super Mario run, the, um, what do you call it? The Super Star Saga run, thank you, was very good was very good if you're just like watching for looking for something to watch while you work or you know for the typical dinner time accompaniment shall i say yeah that's another re that's another thing i've been using those agdq videos for I, i've just been watching them while i eat You know, if you're checking out the speedrunning videos, I think the hypest one that I've seen so far is this one where they did a super super punch out for the Wii blind. The guy was wearing a blindfold and everything, and he beat the entire game. And the really funny thing about that is that the the worst enemy to him wasn't wasn't just like the normal opponents in the game, but just being able to navigate through the menu <laughs> in a timely manner. Because the sound design in that game is apparently fantastic. So while difficult, certainly it's not easy, but but it's definitely impossible. It's definitely like possible to read your opponent's cues using just sound. 
Many's are a little less forgiving. Many's are a little bit more all over the place from screen to screen. <laughs> and because you have to select them using the motion controls, it can be quite difficult. Ah, oh, man. We're never going to have something like the Nintendo DS slash Wii combination era ever again, and that makes me sad sometimes. <laughs> So, there's plenty of things to be happy about. I wonder how hard it is to get capture stuff going for a Nintendo Wii. I still have mine kicking around somewhere in a box in my house. I should try to boot, up, boot it up from time to time to see, just to make sure that it works, though. If I make a curve over here and then just rotate it, is that going to do anything for me? Yes, it will. Fabulous. Just going to make it a little bit more curved. Okay, then the big shoulder over here. Let's see. Put this here, tilt it a little this way, perfect. I forgot the third, fourth, fourth little uh, thingy my thing here. I don't know what to call these, the legs of the Grenade? I don't... No. I remember in the original version of the grenade, they, these were supposed to be like trigger points for to ignite the fuse. Got it. It really... I, I feel like we don't appreciate, or rather we don't make fun of sufficiently how stupid some military inventions are before somebody is, somebody realizes that yeah no that thing we were doing before just works better <laughs> like these discus hand grenades right some mad genius was like yo what if we could like roll these things <laughs> instead of like you know because this is what, this is back when like all grenades were still like stick like explosives on the end of sticks and you had to throw the whole stick and the explosive with it too and they were like, yo, what if we could, like, roll this thing? And everybody was like, dude, that sounds like a tight plan. But the way that they decided to make it roll was also, like, the ignition method. So now what you essentially had was, like, this thing that, that could roll but not ignite. So you wouldn't know until, like, a few, like a, like, a solid minute or a little while after you'd actually thrown it to know whether or not it worked. And I think that's pretty funny. <laughs> like, how many dudes were out there in the middle of World War One, being like, I don't get it. Where's the kaboom? There's supposed to be an earth-shattering kaboom! <laughs> ay, ay, ay. And then somebody invented, like, the pineapple grenade, and everybody was like, yeah, no, we should just stick with this thing. I mean, to be fair, the I feel I feel like out of all handheld explosives, the the pineapple looking frag grenade has the most swag to it. 
Like the ones that are just kind of like round, like lemon shaped, right? Those are fine, but like they don't have the kind of delicious beveled textured of the pineapple looking one. Okay. Just erase this little chunk here. Actually, put put a cross section a little bit further up so it doesn't completely erase. Gonna flare Horatio's nostrils here just a little bit. Just to indicate that he's real incensed. Okay, put that there. Then over here, we'll have the other part of the nose. There we go. All right, just add the horns. How much else would we need to do? Okay, the front part of a ratio and the background. Okay. How are you for time? We've got about an hour or so left before I start running out of gas. I bet I can finish this. <laughs> I, be I, I believe. I just got to believe. <laughs> as funny and as funky as Parappa the Rapper looks, my knowledge that I, that I fail even the most basic levels of most rhythm games is, some, is somewhat of a preventative measure from falling into that particular rabbit hole. Like I've seen people who are like genuinely good at rhythm games get white and get spanked during level three, which is like the yeah, I know rhythm games are f really hard for me. You know, it's not like they're easy for most people, right? Like m most people aren't like god like a Taiko Tatsujin or something. But I don't know. I feel like I particularly tend to have issues with them. Okay. I should make this more angry looking. Okay, then over here. I don't know. Is there like a certain person who is like, you can tell that they're skilled at rhythm games. I don't know how to put it. Like, th there are some people where, where you, you where you look at them and you're like, yeah, no, you you could definitely kick my ass at like Magic the Gathering or something. I don't know how to put it. Some people have like this aura where you can kind of tell what they're good at in terms of like gaming. It's not always very uh, obvious, but for some people, it is like it is like written on them practically. Uh. 
for most people actually i'd say it's very difficult to tell that but like people who are very i'm i i feel like the people who i admire the most are always the people who can do things that i can't do or things that i wish i could do better rather like people who are very good at rhythm games i really admire those people oh the lines go like this not like that yeah recently i picked up this puzzle game right um it's this mobile app that has a bunch of different kind of like micro puzzles in there that you can they're essentially all like different variations of they're not variations so it's basically like a small collection of a variety of different types of puzzles that you can uh, that, that you can basically just play and i'm really I, I really like this one where you have to untangle a bunch of lines and points to make sure the points and lines don't overlap i find that one very soothing although recently i've gotten into this one that's a little bit harder to explain so basically you have a grid and on this grid you have circles on the intersections and on those circles there is a number so that number represents how many lines you can take out of the circle and if you connect more than the than the number of, of more lines to that circle than is on the circle the app called i think it hang on let me do i have my phone on me i don't have my phone on me where is my phone I remember reading about it on like a Tumblr post or something. It's called like a, uh, uh, hang on, puzzle game collection app. It's none of these. It's like it's literally called like Bert's or something. Bert's puzzle games or something. I think there was like a Tumblr post about it circling out a little while back. Let me see if I can't find it anywhere. I, I, I can DM you the name of it if I don't find it in like the next five minutes. Okay, I might, I might have to DM you the name of the app. <laughs> But yeah, no, that's been, that's been my go-to for a long time now. Or actually, not a long time now, for like two months. <laughs> okay, having a nail here. Something about this doesn't seem right. I think I put the thumb too high up. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of phones, today I had like one of the most hectic experiences of my life. So I'm... I'm not scared necessarily of phone calls, right? I know there are some people who are like, "Oh no, I don't want to do make, do the do the phone call. I'm too scared." I'm also I'm not quite like that. For me, it's more like, "Ah, oh, dude, but do, making the phone call is such a bother." <laughs> like I'm genuinely like just too. I cannot be asked to make like a very simple phone call from time to time, like booking haircuts, booking. <laughs> Shit like that. It's not that I'm scared of booking them. I know that the, that booking them is super easy and fast and convenient. It's just that I'm like, yeah, <laughs> doing the phone call, like getting into, like I need to like lock in to do the phone call. <laughs> I need to be like, all right, no more fucking around. <laughs> but yeah, and I needed to do that for a thing for a thing that i need to get looked at by a doctor right I, I i my the province where i live in does this thing where like you can instead of going to like a walk-in clinic you can essentially book a visit to a doctor through a virtual site 
and you can ask, basically it's 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 the same as like a normal clinical visit. You 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 tell them what's wrong, they diagnose you, they prescribe you things. They can give you a referral to like a more qualified institution if, if need be. That that's kind of what I was looking for today. And so the only issue is that much like normal clinics as well, it is difficult sometimes to get a hold of the medical staff in question. So for example, I had to like essentially do that thing. Do you know that thing where like people are like reloading concert websites every five minutes to see if like the tickets are up for sale? If that's a thing that people still do instead of like using bots or something? I, you basically have to do that to like check if you have access to like uh, to talk to like an actual trained doctor <laughs> Ra rather than like I think it was like there's one that can give you like advice basically like there's one that you can call at any time they have like a 24 7 service that is for extremely basic shit but the, if you want to like talk to like a doctor doctor then that one you kind of have to like Try and try your hand at the calling gotcha for. <laughs> the good news is that if there isn't one available, they don't bullshit you and put you on hold. They they just say like, yeah, no, that's not available right now. Check in, check back in a little bit later. Which I appreciate. You don't need to be like held in suspense like that. Similarly, like once you do finally match with a doctor, they you get like a phone notification, you get like some and like an email notification saying like, yo, the doctor is ready to talk to you now. You should you should probably tap in, <laughs> and so the issue with this is that I had to. I was expecting it to take longer, basically. Yeah, no, that is actually pretty nice. It, it's basically like a Disney fast pass, <laughs> you know, before it became garbage, um, but for medical care. <laughs> That's so funny to think about, actually. But yeah, anyway, I got a, I got a chance to talk to a doctor, but while I was literally on a call at work. So I was basically scrambling to like convince the doctor to like stay on the line <laughs> while also like, like juggling the work call being like like being like, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> while typing furiously to the doctor, I am here. Do not fucking leave. <laughs> Thankfully, I managed to convince the uh, it, I was calling like one person at work and I managed to convince them to like check back in tomorrow because they obviously weren't very prepared for the call either. So thankfully it seemed to work out. But it was really nerve wracking because I didn't want to like lose my place in the queue for medical treatment. Yeah, it all worked out in the end. I got the referral I was looking for and everything. I kind of regret giving Horatio. Uh, I forgot what these are called. Like something or other. Ret retrograde? Tardigrade? No, it's like Digitrade. Digitrade legs. Honestly, shout out to Tardigrades. Oh, hey. Hey, Emerald. Thank you for that. Yeah, welcome to the stream. You know, shout outs to Target the Greats for real for being like extreme the extremist of extremophiles. <laughs> like obviously they're not very happy living in like devastating conditions, right? Like they're not happy living in extreme conditions, but like they can survive it, and that's pretty dope. I always thought their like colloquial name was super cute too, like Calling them water bears. That is such a cute little... That's a, such, a, such a cuter name. Ah, uh, yes. Water bears. Of course they're in the water. How, how else would they get at the salmon? I feel like we as a society have fallen off of Cat My Fat, Fat Bear Week. Remember when we discovered that back in like 2010 and everybody went nuts for it for like a solid week? 
I'm sure there's still it's still got shooters out there, but I feel like we need to go back to that era for a little bit, you know, just get excited about an animal doing its best and getting fat. In a weird way, I feel like the decline of Facebook has somewhat contributed to this. Because you used to have like old people getting in on this shit and they had the best comments about it. And uh, we, we do still see it around, I think. Just not nearly as much as we did it that first time we discovered it. It's kind of like the Galve goat now as well. You know, we still hear about it. We were like, oh, did the goat burn down this year? Yeah, no. But it's much, it's much less enthusiastic. I don't know. I think something about the coronavirus really brought out the pyromaniac in a lot of people. Pretty huge this year, at least in the post I saw. Word? Nice. Hang on, maybe I can make this work by... Mostly because of everyone getting excited about the birds. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Now you gotta... I feel like sometimes if an oracle from, like, ancient Greece or something were to see some of the things that we get up to today, they would be, like, shitting themselves. They would be tripping themselves to make a prophecy. <laughs> They'd be rubbing their hands. Being like, oh, fuck, yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like I could make a pretty decent mad profit. You know, I, I can grow a beard. I can, I can look pretty scraggly. I have the qualifications for the job. I love bullshitting. <laughs> I, have the, I have the correct qualifications. Hmm. Hang on, I might need to re-strategize the little leg situation over here. Okay, then we would have this, then this. Then we would need to pull the shorts up just a tiny bit. But, you know, a bunch of crows eating at the corpse of a goat in effigy. Now, nah, that that, that, that's prophecy material right there. It's, it's like that one post of somebody showing a picture of like a karakara or some kind of bird of prey attacking a snake in midair, which is like the found, the founding myth. Like apparently when the pre, pre-colonizer people who, in Mexico saw that, they were, they were like, yo, we should definitely build a city here. Like, I get it. That's definitely a, that's, that's definitely a kind of we should build a city here kind of moment. <laughs> Okay, put that there. Wait, this doesn't make sense. His legs would need to be a little bit bigger because otherwise Hawk's arm posture wouldn't make sense. Big ol' big gams. Okay, then put this boot over here. That's actually a benefit of this angle, is that the boot is going to overtake a lot of the shoe here.
Wait, what's this part? Oh, that's a cargo pocket. Yeah, no, we can get rid of that. Okay, take this out. Okay. Let me put this down here. Or actually just sharpen the curve a little bit. There we go. All right, uh, then we got to do the background for this layer, for this panel. I think the first thing to do would probably be to do whatever is in the tent here. What is that flagpole there? Is that, was that always there? No, 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 let's just, uh, let's just forget about that part for now. Okay, then put this over like this. Add a couple folds. Then over here, that's going to go in like this. I like how you can tell that I straight up just like made the flat version of this and then I just angled it at the right angle because you can see <laughs> the utter lack of third dimension and on these two posts right here. It'd be nice to have a little something there, so I'm gonna add them. I'm gonna go ahead and add them. <laughs> okay, put this here. Okay. What's next? Uh, we'd have to get the... We wouldn't be able to see the generator structure back here, thank God. So I guess next would be the kind of smaller tent back here. Okay, this computer, what in God's name did I have in mind when I made this computer? Like, I see <laughs> the huge fucking power switch in the front. Oh my God. In the 50s, this is the closest thing that they could have conceived of to our gaming rig. <laughs> Having reel to reel up there, whatever the fuck this is inside. <laughs> I guess those are like tape rolls, aren't they? 
Dude, do you know how fucking hyped like some teenage kid in like the 50s would have been to like imagine imagine like a uh, gaming rig with RGB lighting? Bro, it's like, gee, mister, that sure is swell. Do you reckon we could add one of those RGB lights to my spinning top? Storing soda cans in there? Yeah, Th- those are actually like drinkable cool and you- they're- they're- it tastes like oolong tea. <laughs> you just keep it warm in there. If you want to have it piping hot in the winter, you need to run a crisis at 60 FPS. I mean, not going to lie. Some of, I'm, I don't mean to be that guy, but some of the coolant in some of these gaming PCs does look awfully drinkable for something that's lethally toxic. Like, how are you going to be cherry red like Kool-Aid and not be drinkable? Come on now. On an unrelated note, now I, I am now banned from the chemist's office for some reason. <laughs> now I wasn't one of those kids who messed around with bottles. I I, I used to be I used to be very scared of like, well, precisely that kind of incident, just like accidentally touching something and instantly being immolated by the poison force. I don't know. I assume that if you got acid on you, that was like game over. <laughs> and it, it is in a way, but like probably not in as a dramatic of a way that I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, that's toxic. You are immediately that. Like no ingestion, no skin to skin, no like extended skin contact. Just like one touch of like fucking your base like fusidic acid or something and i was and i was done i was cooked yeah i i don't think there's such a thing as being too careful with noxious substances though so i feel like that's not that's not really like i feel like i was in the right for having those opinions <laughs> Some sort of aura of malignant instant death. Mm, precisely. Man, learning about what the fucking speed force was in the DC Comics universe fucked me up. Like, what do you mean he doesn't just go fast? There's like a bunch of other bullshit associated with it too? <laughs> and this has been the plot line for multiple series? It was it it was just honestly like the thing is right. I knew about the different superheroes. I just never knew what their deal, so to speak. Like, well, no, I did know what their deal was, right? Because like most superheroes have like a deal, right? Like Spider Man, you know that that guy he can do whatever a spider can, pretty famously. But like, the, but like the Flash, I knew that that guy went fast. But I didn't know any of the mechanics behind it, like. I also knew that Spider-Man got his powers from, like, a spider bite, right? But, like, I didn't know that they were, for example, like, multiverse spiders or some shit. What do you mean there's some sort of other bullshit associated with it, too? It's, like, 99% of superhero comics. True. (laughs) And we love them for it. Well, some people do. Do you, th- do you reckon that was like the final straw in making Alan Moore write The Watchmen? He was like, "All right, that's it." <laughs> he th- he like r- learned about the speed what the speed force was, and I was like, "All right, that's it." I'm about I'm about to create the the a set of characters that will make the most toxic motherfucker you've ever known clap their hands in glee. <laughs> Like, obviously, making something like The Watchmen is something that obviously takes, like, a long, long time of, like, just brewing and simmering and just being, like, you know, just, just like, having, having, that, having that shit in your mind. Like, here's the thing, right? If you have a negative environment or, like, if you're in a dark place, right? You tend to create things that that like ref- you try to tend to say and create things that reflect 
that state of mind. But I'm wondering, like, what the final straw was for Alan Moore to, like, finally pull the trigger on the Watchmen. Well, or is it just Watchmen or is it, just, or is it the Watchmen? I think it's just Watchmen. I, I know just a little bit about the Watchmen because I, my brother did an essay on it in high school and I inherited his copy of the, of the like compendium of it. Let's see. I think I read up to all around the part where they broke Rorschach out of prison. I did finish reading V for Vendetta, though. That was a good book. I remember reading that, uh, uh, rereading that one a couple times as a kid. Well, I say as a kid. I was like, what, 15? I guess it's still enough to, that's still young enough to be called a kid, but. I don't know. I feel like that's pushing the boundaries of kid. I feel like he, I feel like up until somebody is like seventeen, you can keep calling them kid as like a term of endearment, or like you can refer to yourself as a kid. But like, you know, no. Once you're past like seventeen, that's like you have you have to be like, no, that's a young man. <laughs> that's. I I think once you're past twenty five, that's when people start calling you sir. I know some vague stuff with Alan Moore and that he lost some rights to some stuff with disputes at some point and did push heavily for comic creators actually keeping their rights rather than losing everything to publishers. Based if true. <laughs> Got it. Comics as an industry is just honestly so fascinating because you get to see... Like, studying the history of comics and, like, the kind of shit the, the comic creators had to go through is kind is practically, like, a microcosm of, like, what we see today in modern content creation. Dare I use that word? Um, and, and shit like AI art. Like, because they were not seen as particularly... You know, like, they made money, but they weren't seen as valuable, if that makes sense. So I, I feel like see, seeing like how comic work, comic makers were treated back in those days, and I guess how to, and to an extent how they're treated now, obviously as well, right? Like some of the, that stuff hasn't gone away for sure. Hang on. Yeah, exactly. It took a while to get to like proper crediting. Yeah, it's rough out there. Hang on, how, how do these pants work? How do these lugs work? Okay, so it's about, it's about up to the calf. Actually, a problem. the pant leg would probably go lower here. Up. I'm going to copy and paste this boot because nobody can stop me. Moore's outspoken opinions and principles, particularly on the subject of a creator's rights and ownership, would see him burn bridges with a number of other publishers over the course of his career. Cool. I'm sure that's not going to... I'm sure that's not going to be relevant ever again. <laughs> oh my fucking God, it really is just the same shit different year, huh? That's, hmm. Whew. Yeah, I don't know how to feel about that. I don't think I, I don't think I can in good conscience joke about that any more than I already have. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Oh, 
Well, in any case, people will keep on making things, even if people try to screw them over. The best we can do is keep fighting to make sure that if everybody has their just their right shares. You know, every year, right? Like, <laughs> every, I, I, my, my, uh, my career trajectory is pretty funny because I, I feel like I've told this story. I've definitely told this story before. When I was in high school, we had this very short assignment to um, basically budget, right? We need to learn how to budget for ourselves once we... I like how your model is still in the gunslinger mode. <laughs> yeah. I'm still rocking the bow the Majima the Majima fit. But yeah, we we had to do like this um budgeting thing in high school. And you know, to do that we also had to like be like, what's gonna our income gonna be like, right? What's our median income for our chosen careers? And you know, I wanted to be an artist, but my math teacher was like, nah, 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 pick something serious. <laughs> and I was like, wow, okay, asshole. And I was like, fine, I'll be an accountant then. <laughs> if you're going to be such a dick about it. <laughs> yeah. And, and, then I was, and then I was like, huh. You know, on the other hand, I've, I've also been like talking to people from that are, because we had a couple of people in my school who were like 100% for sure going to be art students. Like, I also thought I was in that camp at first, but I was like, you know what? Maybe maybe I should do accounting. Fuck it. I I, I like office stuff. <laughs> and apparently it like pays decent, so why not? So I go I I go to get my accounting degree. And now apparently there's like a shortage of accountants in North America. <laughs> but the problem is like they they're still not particularly paid very well because like there's a bunch of this shit about AI. Like that's affecting things too. There's a whole there's so much fuckery going on in like accounting in general like i followed this account called like the big four account like tb t4b or tb4a or something on twitter and it's basically memes made by people who are like in the in like the super high profile accounting companies and shit is like really bad for them <laughs> at the moment Luckily, my, my current job seems to be stable enough, but uh, yeah, it's really funny to me that I was like, yeah, and no, I'll be an accountant. That seems to be more stable. And now it seems to be <laughs> in jeopardy of not being stable. <laughs> uh, fuck my life. No, nah, I'm, not, I'm not too pessimistic about the future, to be honest. I'll figure out how to live one way or another. Just like everyone else. I'm really happy with the, how this expression came out. This motherfucker looks pissed. <laughs> he just, his team just lost the Super Bowl. <laughs> what was the outcome of that of that nonsense anyway? Like, who won the Super Bowl th this year? Let me Google that. Who won the Super Bowl 2024? Let's see. 25 to 22, Kansas City Chiefs. One of those teams won, probably. Now this year it was the refs who took it who took it all home. <laughs> yeah, they, they did some Senator Armstrong shit and they ripped their shirts off and started running into the field, being the shit out of the normal players and taking the ball from them. It it was a bloodbath. They had to cut out midway through the match. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I saw one of the referees doing the Shungoku Satsu, which, as you can as you can all probably assume, is at least a three yard penalty. I think the mas mascot should win sometime. You know, I think you're right. Let's get the cheerleaders in there too. Why not? Let's let's see let's see them take a spin at the game. You know they've been around long enough. They must know the rules by now, right? 
I don't know. Can you like have a football related job without knowing the rules? <laughs> like, is that gonna fuck you up if you're like a cheerleader or something? If you don't know the rules of the game, like, will you will you just follow everybody else's lead and you'll be okay? Like, how feasible is it that somebody who knows absolutely zero about football can get some kind of higher ranking job in the NFL? Like, not as a player, obviously, but like as a, as like one of the administrative staff or one of the supporting people. Like, will being just absolutely sports illiterate kind of like ruin your chances? Like, I feel like it must, but I don't know. Is there, is there a position where you don't need to know anything? Working at a football adjacent job and trying your hardest to learn absolutely nothing. Yeah. One one of your buddies is like, that was good, the touchdown, right? And you have to like cl clutch his lips close and be like, never say those words to me ever again. <laughs> I will remain ignorant. I will remain ignorant. <laughs> Yeah. God. Man, I read almost the entirety of I Shield 21 and I still didn't learn shit about how about like the mechanics of football. <laughs> so I think it's it's kind of I, I think it's kind of a lost cause for me. <laughs> I feel 21 is such a good comic. Like, I have two comics that I'm sure if I had read, in high, read them in high school, I would have gotten into that particular sport. And those are Slam Dunk and I Shield 21. Like, that's how good they are. That's how compelling they are as narratives. All right, we're going to get started on this last panel here. I like how when we did the, like when we're doing this reveal right here, the char the character of Gora goes from being like this super wide eyed, googly eyed lizard woman to like nine levels cunt here <laughs> I feel I feel like that's 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 like an underrated gift Raph got me <laughs> it's just seeing like the the sheer difference between them Okay, put this here. But perhaps you might ask, how, how can the lizard woman have eyelashes if lizards are generally hairless? Well, the answer is they're feathers. Huh, I wonder actually what that would feel like and what the difference between like eyelashes and like feather eyelashes would be like in terms of texture. Like, I know feathers can be pretty soft, but I don't know how effective they are at keeping dust out of your out of your eyes. I feel like they would have to be at least somewhat effective, right? Maybe not as effective as hair. Maybe even more effective. I don't know. We we haven't let a we haven't let one of those ho little hollow boned jerks evolve to the point where we have to worry about that just yet. But like. I don't know, can we set up some kind of like artificial finch or a sword where we can like Darwinize one of these one of these finches and like see what happens to give them eyelashes? I'm like 90% sure that's not how evolution works. 
<laughs> I don't think it's just put Finches on an island and give them the conditions you need. <laughs> Maybe it is. Maybe it is. I said the phrase Darwinize those finches. I feel like Darwinizing is like a superhero comic term. Speaking of superhero comics, I feel like Darwinize is like something that they would use to like describe a monkey getting instantly smarter. Like that that's how like the that like one really smart monkey from the DC comics came to be. I forgot I forget what his name is. Bro got Darwinized straight up. Okay, then put this over here. Yeah. So sometimes you like think up a word to make up to make up a fake scenario, and then you realize that you've accidentally done too good of a job and now people can't tell if that word is fake or not. Like, the other day, I was trying to make some bullshit science jargon for a bit. And I said something like, oh, yeah, the telluric volumetroscope is ha is having some strange readings. And I actually had to look up if, t uh, like, a volumetroscope was a real thing. Spoilers, it's not. There's no such thing as a volumetroscope. And telluric just means it's related to Earth. The closest thing, I think, would be, like, an earthquake. One of those, like, earthquake graphs. But that's just called a seismograph, not a telluric volumetroscope. They are fun to think up, though. I will say that much. Big, chunky, computer. With the little antenna, thank you very much. I remember seeing something about a certain aesthetic called cassette f retrofuturism or something. Or just cassette futurism, I think. And I was like, that's interesting from an aesthetic standpoint, but I think it would be just very comedic if I said if there was something said in the future and everything still looked like it was from the 80s. Like, not just because the technology hadn't quite marched on just yet, but because it would be really funny if nobody recognized these anymore. Give it 20, 30 years, and I bet you could introduce a floppy disk as, like, this futuristic device. In You, you could basically word-for-word word copy what a floppy disk is and introduce it as, like, a revolutionary storage device in, like, a space operating. The children would be like, wow, so futuristic. I need to, like, time capsule that thought and see if it, if it shakes, if it has any legs at all. I don't know. I'd like to believe that I'll still be around 30 years from now. I'll be quite different, but like, you know, I'll still be here. Yeah, you, you're, imagine you're like in the retirement home watching an episode of like season 89 of Black Mirror. And, you're, and it slowly dawns on you that this is just the fucking Neopets economy crash. Like, what they're describing in the episode is just a Neopets economy crash <laughs> in excruciating detail and not even the slightest bit exaggerated. It's just a straight-up plagiar plagiarized summary of the Neopets economy crash. What ended up, what ended up happening with all those metaverse properties, anyway? Somebody probably still owns them, right? Like, somebody's been left holding the bag for sure, but, like... Can you just shut them down? Like, how do you... What's the maintenance like on those, those puppies right about now? Okay, put this here, put this here. Put 
this here. The one I've never seen, I myself have never seen an episode of Black Mirror. However, I do remember seeing this one Tumblr post of like, what would happen if like a season of Black Mirror was set in the UK? And the one concept I can instantly recall from that post is one dude who went like, me wife's a robot and I ain't bothered. <laughs> like that's that's been kicking around in there for a long time now. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, I think we're at an all-time peak where people would be unbothered by having an, a robot wife, is the thing. Like, I, I know multiple people who have noted that is, like, their specific fantasy. <laughs> Either having a robot wife or being a robot wife. Or I guess not even necessarily being a wife and a robot, just like being a robot and happening to be happily married. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how I would feel about being a cyborg. I think it, I, I think for me, like cyborg or no cyborg, or like brain upload or no brain upload, would primarily depend on like how I feel afterwards. Obviously, the amount of control I retain as well. Like I wouldn't want to go like full on RoboCop, where I no longer have like any emotions and I have to serve, subsist off of gerber baby food for the rest of my life. I wish I I would I would desire a little more dignity than that. <laughs> I don't know if that's asking for too much. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, now an all gerber diet just feels like it's going to be really bad for your digestive tract. It's like eating too much greasy food at a time, you know? It's just like, you need some fiber in there or something. Babies are babies are fine without fiber because like they already poop themselves all day long. But like as time goes on, you do need that fiber intake. You know, it, it like not only does it keep you regular, it also like supposedly helps you retain more nutrients or whatever. There's a lot of benefits to it. see or at least that's what i remember about hearing about fiber and from like my biology class i remember being super invested in like two things in my biology class one being like nutrition and the other one being like how nerves work now i've forgotten most about most about both things but i remember a little bit more about the nutrition part than i do the nerves part Yeah, the, the nerves part is like practically all gone. I, rem I remember the phrase saltatory conduction being pretty important to me at some point. But... Yeah, no, it's gone. <laughs> that sounds like a pretty important phrase. If I recall correctly, saltatory conduction just means that your the electrical impulses in your nerves can jump from one to another. The, and I remember remembering that because saltar means jump in Spanish. And I explained that to my friend, and, and she, I remember that she managed to get like a question on the on like an exam right because I told her about that bit. Let me re hang on. Let, let me Google saltatory conduction. Here we go. The propagation of action potential along my myelinated axons from one node of Ravenier to the next node, increasing the conduction velocity of the action potentials. Okay. I don't remember too much about that. <laughs> but I remember the phrase, and that's a start. <laughs> The note of Ravinier sounds familiar, though. Yeah, we got some science in here. It's it's stuck in real deep, but like it's in there somewhere. Hmm. 
Okay. Did Gora have claws? No, she just had normal hands. I think what's bugging me about this is that her head is too big compared relative to her hands. I need to make the hands bigger. God, how I know that note of Ravinier is like the name of like the central bits of bundles of nerves in your in like your neurons and such do you think that that guy in Ravinier got like some flack from his science buddies like do you reckon like after he called that thing the note of Ravinier like they started blaming him as a bit for like ever having having headaches or something it's like damn ever since ever since that dog bastard Ravinier found out about these notes I, mine's been hurting all day long <laughs> I know that there are like these, um, what do you call? Like, there, there's like a lot of back and forth in some academia. But I wonder how much that translates to like genuine shit, shit talking when like the two of them are in a room together. That's like everybody's dream at a, at a science conference is that two people get heated enough about a topic that a fight breaks out, I think. Like, just once, just once, don't you want to see a mad scientist go full ape mode and really just rip into the other guy? Wimpy little noodle arms just flailing around. Bloodshot, bloodshot eyes full of murderous intent behind th those bottled glasses. Well, it's probably for the best that it, th those events are peaceful. I imagine nothing would get done if, like, every single one of them devolved into a fist fight. That's what Half Life is about, I think. <laughs> God. Yeah, that, that's where that's where Freeman got his crowbar handling skills from. He didn't pick those up on the job. He basically had to act as like a riot police whenever the black mesa scientists had, had like some kind of massive argument that devolved into like one of them starting to build a death ray in uh, in a, one of the little corner offices that's something i think about black mesa all the time like the way that it's set up it looks like it's like a at a pretty remote location like it has a parking garage but like I feel like it's remote enough that like most of the scientists would like just choose to live in the science compound, right? Like that that's what makes the most sense to me. God, I kind of want to see that kind of gives me an idea like what if there was like a game set in like an evil science lab, right? Like 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 you're you're playing as a shocker goon or some shit. And slowly but surely, you start to realize that the places that you've been just going around doing your goon tasks is a one-to-one -one replica of the original Black Mesa complex of Half-Life. <laughs> that the developers just straight up like ripped from the 1997 game or whenever Half-Life came out, I suppose. It's like it's like Pal World, but instead of it being like blade and plagiarism, it's like it, it, it's like a funny little plot twist at the end of it. <laughs> God, did y'all see how like Pal World apparently like lost one point five million players, and it's only been like three weeks since it first launched? Your ass is not retaining attention, brother. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, 
Okay, we need to add a roof. This thing here. This thing here and this thing over here. Yeah, that's true. That does happen with a lot of Mimi games. I, I don't know. I feel like Lethal Company so far still got a pretty healthy player count. Lord knows I still see enough col col collaborations of it happening here and there. I really need to tap onto that game before it completely fizzles out. I I have played exactly like th three games of Among Us in my entire life. And I don't think I'm going to get to play anymore. <laughs> Hell, I never even touched Phasmophobia. And everybody everybody was slobbering over that game for like a solid How long would it have been? Like two years? Two ish years? I want to say two ish years. Mom said it's my turn on the viral streamer game. <laughs> I don't know. I saw that somebody made um, RPG Maker XP free on the Steam store for like a week. So I can't wait to see how, what kind of fruit that bears in like a year to two years. Like, you know, so you know, somebody was like, oh, hey, RPG Maker, let's go check that out. And in two or three games, there's going to be in two or three years, there's going to be like some kind of insane new shit that like dethrones. Fucking, I, I don't know, if you're in hunger or something. That's the best possible outcome we can ask for. It's important that the market enables random sickos who make awesome games out of basically a box of scraps and spare parts. Yeah, no, we need the weird RPG maker game renaissance. And none of that, and nothing like Omori, right? Like, I feel like Omori is trying to be a, one of the like weird RPG maker games. But the problem is that it had like practically a, practically like a triple A games in budget. I don't know. Like, it feels like it had a like a really good budget compared to most random crappy ass <laughs> RPG maker games of yore. It's like how people try to say that Hi-Fi Rush was an indie game. Like, I'll agree that it popped out of nowhere and the studio that it came from wasn't relatively well known, but it absolutely was not an indie game. We need more games with Charles Barkley shut up and jam, jam guide in energy. <laughs> Yeah. Unironically, we need games that have like the we have we need games like we need shovelware garbage like Kong, like Kong and the Golem game, to come out regularly, for an absolutely shoestring budget with like a decent with like an uh, like a weirdly generous dev time. That's what the game industry needs for like two or three years. Just so, like the the poor people working in there can recover from burnout. Just like an entire, just like a good period of like underarm swing, no zero effort game development <laughs> from triple A studios. You know, like indie studios are allowed to be to continue being sickos if they want to be, but like. Hmm. I don't know. How long of an RPG Maker game can you produce in like three months if you're working a day job? Like how, like you can, 
you know, I've seen game jams produce like a full RPG maker game. Well, full as in like it has a cohesive structure and narrative that can be resolved in like half an hour. I remember I got one of those. I got an HIO bundle a while back and it had a couple of games like that in there. Like it had this one that was like very purple, I recall. God, I want to try and learn, and learn just like a dirt cheap me method of producing music because I want to see if I can't at some point make a tiny itty bitty bite sized game of my own at some point. That's always that's like the dream that everybody who grows up playing video games has, right? Like you play a video game, you play a damn good video game. You're like, I kind of want to make something like this one day. I don't know if that's a universal feeling, but I feel like most people who have played a good video game at some point are like, I want to be able to make something like this. You know, obviously those feelings generally don't go anywhere, but like, I feel like if I can figure out just the basics of music making, I can try and make that happen at some point. It's kind of like how I want to make my own comic at some point as well. I've been kicking ideas back and forth about how to do that. But for the time being, I have, I have this project to focus on as well as a couple of other things. The future looks right for me. It's a good thing to have too many projects to, to work on rather than too few. You know, I, I know a lot of people are like, oh, God, why did I start a new web? I'm already got, I've already got like six things in the oven. But frankly, I think that's a good problem to have. I think if it makes you happy to like, it's, it's not always great having to juggle things, obviously. But like, I think if you had a, if you wanted to action that thought bad enough that you like put it into like a state of progress. I think that's not that's definitely a good thing rather than a bad thing. Also, I'm pretty sure I made the gun here wrong. Let me take a look at the reference sheet that I have for Hawk. Yeah, I know it is flanged outward. So what the hell? <laughs> Flange is that a, that's a word that's definitely flange is definitely a word. I don't know if I if it's the right word in this context. I guess the right word would be concave. Ugh. Concave and convex are like my stalagmites stalactites. I remember stalagmites and stalactites because um. The problem with concave for me is like I, I never remember if it's supposed to be like relative to where you're facing or if it's like an absolute direction. I think it is supposed to be relative to what you're facing, but at the same time, that's like it trips me up. It trips me up. It 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 it, it requires effort for me to remember. Yeah, like stalagmites and stalactites are easy because stalagmites grow on the ground with a G, and stalactites grow on the ceiling with a C. But like concave and convex, Ugh. whole another ball game. Let me take another look at the gun reference. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I think I'm gonna wrap up the rest of this probably off stream. I think I'm, I, I, I think I'm good to break for today. I'm feeling I'm starting to feel myself running out of gas. Oh, well, it's streaming today. Let's see. Oh, we got a quite we got quite a few people. Oh, Mocha's drawing something. Let's go say hi to Mocha then. Yeah, thank you all for swinging by. I really appreciate it. It was nice talking with you all. I will be back on Thursday to do a little bit more work on this page. Hopefully by then I'll have the line work all figured out. Have a good week, and I will see you all later.
Bye.